It's been a long time, but I'm back in action. Your guy Mikey with Machine.com again, busy and talking about the cars of the week. And it's been a strong week. You know, my favorite. I'm going to save the best for last, but we're going to be talking some Lexus, some BMW, and some Aston Martin. We'll separate the videos and get into the details of what's going on with each and one of these. And I tell you what. A couple of them I'm happy about, and there's one that just continues to go downhill with the looks department. But to each his own, let's go started. Maybe let's save the horse for first. BMW, hello, welcome, how are you? They introduced a new 5 Series. A lot of people that haven't seen the video, we'll get into that real quick. Give you some footage, let you get in on the action on what we're seeing. I'm going to go straight to the i5 M60 model. This one will boast 600 horsepower, 600, 601 horsepower, 600, uh, 600 foot pound of torque. Remember, all electric vehicle uh, at this point for the i5. So that, that's where we're going to see a lot of a, a lot of the creature coverings of what power brings to the electrical element. Um, design wise, these are going to both both be the same whether you go for the i60 and M6 i5 M60 model or the regular M model, which will not be electric. They'll all look the same. And here again is the options. Let's just quickly look at that. All right. The different options that you can get. I5 e, e Drive 40, BMW i5 M60. That's the powerhouse. Again, I've driven the iX. You've seen a couple of videos on that M60 uh, and the M50 and then the 50 version. They're good. The wagon's good. It looks ugly at first. In certain colors, you get it right. In person, it has not nice rear haunches. It sits right. I, the grill has grown on me. I like it. Um, maybe this will happen with this guy. You got the regular diesel version of the 530, the 55, the 550e X Drive. Again, another electric car. And then here comes to the gas cars, the 520i. I'll be on probably four cylinder. Another 530i, 530i X Drive, 540i. X Drive, 520 diesel, and another 520 diesel. So that kind of gives you a, a quick look on what you're getting. Let's hit the video and see how good it gets from a looks department. I'm going to expand this and let it get busy. So right away, um, that look there, if I stop it there, this is a typical atypical bmw look and it's combined a lot of things so from that higher up angle down it looks pretty good right looks like you have an opportunity to get a very good looking car let's keep going in turn cycle looks like it has a little handle on that i believe that's the electric version you can just tell by the way that front end is jumping up and badges at the front for that eye uh the uh, M60 model. And then here goes the rear. Taking a peek at the rear. Standard to me, um, back end is totally uh, with the 7, seven Series model. The exact replica almost right they didn't do much there and that's due to manufacturing it's not doing it for me guys it really isn't i mean that the top end look is what they have to do the haunch is not sticking out it's pretty generic you know if you told me it's a hyundai sonata i wouldn't i wouldn't glance twice and tell you no i mean that's what i'm getting from this car i hate to do that i'm a big bmw fan but this this is to me is a disappointment um, and the reason why they're probably doing this is because they left everything in, in its own platform. And that's probably the biggest issue. They should have went different. All right. Front end there. All right. So not much not much to see or talk about in that angle. Um, I'm going to go into the, uh, here goes the steels exteriors. Let's hit, the, let's hit the interior. Actually, let's hit the steels one more time. We can see the full look here. Boom. This is what you probably get with eyesight, and that's a lot of things that change, right? When you see things in person, it's just miserable. I mean, I hate it. Guys, I hate it. I'm not going to lie. Miserable. 
big wheels yeah haunch is now sticking out this is the remember this is a sporty version the m60 that's my problem right how's this the m60 okay and you know allegedly they don't go higher i didn't see any ix m60 version that went into a full out m sport model not seeing it so this may be it that front end older sab some may mistaken it for some type of honda i hate to say it you know i don't want to go there but that's the way i feel five five at the end backhand looks pretty good okay i bet it looks good in person i better has i bet it has size diffuser no exhaust i mean really high really high up i mean it's totally a japanese model now what they're trying to do they may be segmenting these sales for japan and that may be it but nothing spectacular did at least they did try to make something different m60 logo in the back i'm gonna close this up let's go into the interior i think this is where the success story is at when we hit into this where's my interior still still no interior or well, i forget to go to the pictures driving driving exterior push contain scene let's just see what this brings us 209 you gotta have some interior 209 come on two minute and nine minute video no interior let's see let's see how bad they are uh probably here well, that's a good look right that's a good look kidney grill right kidney grills there it's probably his best dance okay has that xm front right grill not too big um that front here again a little bit a little bit of design and edge work there just when it gets to the behind this is the best look for it um and again in certain colors it may stand out more um and and i bet as usual when you get it in person you go oh it's not it's not too bad and it starts gaining on you i mean that's just what happens let's get to the back end is there anything interior what a shame all right we're gonna do it ourselves the, the best part of this is not even showing. I mean, it's, it's typical, <laughs> typical BMW and how they do things. Let's get to the interior. And I think that's a success story similar to the IXM60. Uh, we're going to get inside there. Here he goes, the cockadoo doo Let's jump in there. No, it's taking too long. So that's not bad. I mean, atypical. Um, there's a lot of different light ornaments in this. The success story for BMW has been the interior and the technology. That's a new play. Um, innovation on the exterior has, has you know, just gone down. And, um, you know, there's certain people that are saying, keep your M8 competitions, your old M5 competitions, your CSs, your F10s, your F90s. Keep them all because they're probably going to be classics when you look at some. Look, I mean, look at that thing. Wow. I, I, I gotta get over it. I gotta get over it. Let me uh, let's get into the interior some more. Right here, some more interior photos. We'll go to the right. Pretty standard, uh, big screen, all the technology there. They're all pretty similar, and then the ambient lighting obviously is gonna change depending on the settings. If there's mood settings, let's read up a little bit. That'll be for the full review, but I'm gonna hit this uh, uh, just for now. Released. What is, what's to say about not much all right let's go into a better one number two there has been shots of the new gx lexus 2024 this is what we're looking for okay or what i'm looking for haunches there edge i love the land rover defender that's a great vehicle i think that really sparked the actually rank let's be honest the wrangler hit it bronco hit it or excuse me ran land rover hit it then the bronco hit it so Lexus has to come to the party with an off-roader that's going to be memorable. I think they did a good job with the Highlander. They did a good job with the 4Runner. Again, these haven't, some of these haven't been released in the new Tacoma. Now that design language jumps into the GX, which is a powerhouse in the Middle East, Africa, countries like that. And you can see this is garner enough to be something special. Look at that front end. Watch out. This is going to be a hit. Obviously, electric will come into play. And you gotta look like what Lex is doing with the GX. Now here goes my favorite. That's a new future release. Oh Lord. Uh, no sounds involved. DB12. Wow. Let's see if I can get some sounds on here. It's worth it. Let's go. Let's see it. Let's see it. No, no. Seeing is believing. No, no. Doesn't like me. 
doesn't like the sound. We're going to jump out. Look at this thing. Huh? Is there anything more that needs to be said? Front end of the um, Super Legera DBS with the back end of the old DB11. Smaller profile you can see. Let's get into the, all the changes. Power, 202 miles top speed, 3.5, 3.6 to 60. Um, 671 horsepower. I believe it's 595 foot-pounds of torque. We'll get there. Except all. They're already telling it because this configurator looks better than look at this thing. Lord have mercy. You know, when you get to electric cars, you expect a better design. But this is a gas car with a 4-liter V8 source from Mercedes-Benz. And, and it's going to be the sexiest thing on wheels. Now, here goes the biggest change for these guys, which we're going to see. Interior-wise, big-time engineering performance, right? That's what they're talking about. Look at this thing. Oh, Lord. Center console. Watch the center console. Nice short profile. Front-end overhang. All right, let's go ahead. Back out. There it goes. This has been the biggest change for them. Sourced in-house. All new interior, mama say mercy on me. James Bond, God rest the dead. Aston is back. Look at that front. Look at the wheel. Thick wheel, way it's supposed to be for a sports car. Still gasoline. I don't care how fast the electric cars are. There's nothing brings a passion in changing your gears. And this has it. Obviously, a different assortment of interior choices. Um, this brown, I think, does the interior a little bit better from a justice department. And that's going to be the focus. We all we always knew they had the engines, especially with that Mercedes sourced engine. We're probably going to lose the V12, which is sourced by them, but maybe it'll be a one-off like the seven, uh, the recent release DBS 770. We'll see some V12s. Look at this, knurled, curled, <laughs> open space there, carbon fiber, not in the bright house. That's the real deal. Excellent. Excellent work from this team. And then there goes a nice little topography on what this is supposed to this is going to be the seat changer here. I think it just does enough, right? This is all you needed uh, from Aston. And they will continue to be a niche brand and make some money on their cars and being a niche brand. Big, big come up for them, obviously, was a DB707. Look at, again, the size of this is different. They are hinting at competition with the 911 Turbo S. So I'm interested to see the dynamics on this. The front end is a little bit different by that sharp fin front end right here. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot more photos of the way it's changing uh, from an exterior perspective. But great job by Aston on this release. The grill, wide body, everything to perfection. It's going to cost a bill, though. Guarantee you that, especially with the tax. There it goes, that configurator. There it goes. So again, very similar to the DB11 in the back, but the front end is so DBS. Uh, whew, I don't know what to tell you guys. This this is sex on wheels for me. This is, again, all these big guys. You want a car with size. This is it. I don't think it gets better than this. There goes a different color. So I'm going to see this green. This green has to be nasty. Oof. Oof. Man, look at that. Nasty, nasty, nasty looking car in a good way. DB12 comes to play, and Aston Martin definitely delivers. That is the hits for the week. It's your guy Mikey with Machini. We'll get busy back to doing some videos. 14 minutes in, a little too long, but we're having fun. Your week in cars. I'm out of here.